Welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Travis and this is Bacon and Backpacking and today we've got some new ultralight gear. We're going to take a first look at my brand new pack, the Z-Packs Nero 38 liter. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the features and specifications and then we'll show you the pack a little bit more. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, who the <laughs> target audience for this pack is and what its purpose is. Okay. This is for somebody who either has or is looking to have a dialed in ultralight backpacking setup. Okay. First of all, this pack is good at holding up to 20 pounds. That is it, okay? This thing is so small and so lightweight, if I take all the gear out of it, I can literally fold it down and put it inside of a gallon freezer bag. <laughs> that is how minimalist and how small the pack is, okay? So don't be thinking you're gonna be carrying, you know, 35 pound loads in this thing, all right? It is frameless in its current configuration. It has no hip belt on it, okay? Think of this, it's just like a little bit bigger of a day pack, but even lighter. So let's go ahead and break down some of those buzzwords we just heard. So ultra light, um, how light is it? Well, the pack empty <laughs> weighs 10.2 ounces. Um, to my knowledge, this is the lightest backpacking pack that is on the market as of the recording of this video. I could be wrong, but I looked at a bunch of different packs and to my knowledge, this is the lightest one that I saw. 10.2 ounces for the 100 Ultra, which is the gray color. They also make this pack in black as well too, which is 200 Ultra. And I believe that the black color is maybe like an ounce heavier. So either way, you're looking at like a 10 to 11 ounce pack here, okay? So we tackled the ultra light word. Now let's talk about the fabric itself, Ultra. What is Ultra? So um, most of you are probably familiar with Dyneema, uh, Cuban fiber, you know, kind of revolutionized like the ultra light gear industry. Uh, this is supposed to be the next, you know, best thing basically. It's supposed to be lighter weight than Dyneema and it's supposed to also be stronger than Dyneema as well too. Now, obviously this is a first look video. I've used this pack one time, so I cannot give, you know, a verdict on whether or not that is true. We will see here in about six months when I actually do like a full review on this pack after I feel like, you know, I've used it enough to actually speak honestly about it, okay? This is just kind of showing you like my impressions so far, going over some of the features and the specs, stuff like that, okay? So Ultra Fabric, according to Z-Pax, is waterproof. All of the seams where it is stitched is uh, covered up with Dyneema waterproof tape as well too. So basically it's, you know, it's seam taped just like a tent would be to keep it waterproof. So again, this is a roll top pack, all right? So there's a single strap up top. That's the standard option that allows you to kind of compress this down, um, make it not look like it's a funny shape, okay? Um, up top, it functions just like a dry bag. It's got this buckle right here. And again, like I said, it is a roll top with a Velcro closure at the top, okay? So say we take food bag out, go ahead, hit the Velcro, now we can compress the pack down even further. Look how much smaller that got, <laughs> right? We can go ahead, cinch her off again, basically waterproofed ultra fabric, and it is seam taped, right? So look how much more space we now have, right? And obviously you can compress it down even more. And the cool thing is you can compress this thing down infinitely <laughs> because it doesn't have a frame. And um, for all intents and purposes, it should basically be waterproof. Um, I have used it in pretty heavy rain already on its maiden voyage and you know, not a drop of water you know, was in the pack. So let's go ahead and discuss, you know, one of the other main features of this pack. You know, how's a pack 10.2 ounces? Well, first of all, the shoulder straps are super thin. I believe these are like three eighths thick padding, okay? But again, an ultralight backpack, guys, is basically just like a reinforced trash bag with some shoulder straps on it is pretty much what it is, okay? Um, and everything is meant to be minimalist. If you had a traditional loadout and you had these thin shoulder straps, you know, and you're carrying 35, 40 pounds of gear or something, first of all, the pack would probably disintegrate. Second of all, even if it didn't, uh, you probably wouldn't feel very comfortable actually hiking with it on trail, okay? You got like this daisy chain here, right? So you can attach various things and different, you know, accessories from Z-Packs on here and, um, you know, kind of move some of the accessories around. And it does have the, you know, mesh on the back of it for a little bit better, you know, ventilation and slip resistance and stuff like that. But with a 15-pound pack, I mean, you really don't need... <laughs> 
you know, too many features. So that's the first thing. Again, this pack is frameless. There is no frame whatsoever. It's just a bag. Now, having no frame um, is very interesting, you know, when you first get into it. Um, it's got its advantages and it has its drawbacks. So first of all, you know, like I said, if you're trying to overload this pack, forget about it, okay? Um, but they have a very clever solution here, uh, Z-Pax does. So considering that this thing has no frame whatsoever, obviously the fabric of the pack itself is the only thing that is retaining any sort of shape. So they have this super ultralight sit pad right here. Um, it's reversible, it's blue and gray. This thing weighs about one ounce, and what this is supposed to do is if there's anything that's like kind of like pokey or um, sharp, hard, well, there better not be anything sharp in here, <laughs> but um, hard, like pokey, anything like that, um, this is supposed to prevent that from like stabbing you in the back while you hike. Now, I don't really have anything like that in my pack anyway, so it's not really a big deal. Um, I did use the sit pad on the maiden voyage, but I'm pretty sure I probably didn't need it. I'm also going to do, you know, probably my next trip without it and kind of compare the difference and see, you know, if there's any point to having it. Now, especially with me having a chair, I don't really care too much about having the sit pad, right? It doesn't really matter to me. I already have a chair. It is very thin, though. Um, I don't know if you'd want to rely on this as your primary, you know, sit pad for your trip, but I'll do some testing on that and we'll, we'll see. So I've taken this pack out once and the total trail weight, meaning everything that was in the pack on the pack, whatever was about 14 and a half pounds and you know i can say not having a hip belt you know having these thin shoulder pads not having a frame um doesn't really matter whenever you're carrying 15 pounds i mean you know the pack was you know comfortable enough that um you know it didn't bother like my neck my traps in between my shoulder blades um didn't get a headache um no pain anything like that now it wasn't a long trip you know it was just like 16 mile overnighter or something like that but that is far enough and long enough to know, you know, whether this pack was going to make me completely miserable, and it didn't, okay? Now, I want to take it out on a three, four, five-day trip um, with a heavier loadout that's up closer to around 20 pounds at, like, the start of the trip. That's going to give me, you know, a little bit better of an idea of, you know, the strengths and weaknesses of this pack. Every single manufacturer rates the capacity of their pack differently, okay? Okay. What z -Packs does, that 38 liters, is the total storage capacity of the pack. So, for example, this main body right here, I mean, you guys can see, you know, how thin this thing is, right? The main body of the pack is only 25 liters, okay? Now, I can get a top quill, an under quill, a tarp, all of my food, um, my food bag, my, you know, basically all the gear that I have can fit in this main pack. But, you know, if you have like a synthetic sleeping bag or something rather than a down top quilt, forget about it because the synthetic sleeping bag is probably gonna take up the entire main body of the pack just on its own, okay? Like I said, the main body here is 25 liters. This mesh pocket out here on the outside, this is eight liters. And then these side pockets over here, there's one on each side they are two and a half liters a piece, okay? So that is where your 38 liter total capacity comes from, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more miscellaneous things, guys. So first of all, these side pouches, I mean, you can see how sizable they are. Um, I have the one end of my Helinox Chair Zero completely stuffed down in there, and I actually did fit another one liter water bottle in here, um, empty and full, both. So pretty sizable, you know, side pockets. And then over here, you kind of have like this daisy chain of this shot cord right here. And this can help you cinch down things, you know, like trekking poles, um, you know, or tent poles or something like that, a chair, um, you know, your water bottle, stuff like that. And it also offers, helps them, you know, shape the pack a little bit. You can, you know, loosen it or tighten it depending on, you know, what the volume of the pack is. So that's what the sides look like. Pretty much the same on both sides again to give you an idea of what their capacity is my rain jacket and my rain pants are both in there uh, the rain jacket is the frog togs um, ultralight 2 and then all the way down here about the size of my fist probably not even is the z-pax vertice uh, rain pants are in there as well too and then let's take a look at that front mesh again i've got water bag in there i've got cordage and hardware for my tarp. I've got my med kit. I've got my poop kit, which by the way, <laughs> I, 
Space Bear Bags. Poop kit, go check them out, super funny. Sawyer Squeeze. Fire kit. Nightcore NU25 headlamp with charging cable and a thermometer. And then also too, my, <laughs> my steak bag. Do you guys get it? It's a steak bag from Hilltop Packs. But I've got a Diddy bag coming um, from Hilltop Packs and I want to consolidate all that stuff into a ditty bag and it's going to go inside the pack, okay? Um, I haven't done that yet because I just switched packs and all this stuff used to reside in the hip belt pouches on my other pack, but now I don't have a hip belt. So all this stuff except for the water filter is gonna make its way inside the pack. And then I'm gonna keep this available for, you know, if it's pouring rain or something and I have like my tarp soaking wet, I'm gonna keep that on the you know outside of the pack. So that's kind of what this is meant for is to kind of dry out like a rain fly or a tarp or something like that. Now, just so you guys know, um, you can get a hip belt for this pack. Um, it's just a one inch strap, basically. It's not really a hip belt in the sense that you think it is, okay? It's just a, a strap. I literally just put it on like at the house and it feels super weird. I mean, it pulls the pack in a way that, I don't know, it doesn't feel like a normal pack, right? It's kind of like you're trying to take an ultralight pack and, and, you know, overload it and pretend like it's a traditional pack with that belt, I feel like. And I just, I, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. I didn't even take it on the trip. Um, I will try it out to put it in the review video, like I said, but I don't think you're gonna really ever see me using that or having it on the pack, you know, probably ever other than to just test it. Like the way that I would envision you using that is you probably wouldn't use it like 90% of the time, but if your traps and stuff started aching a little bit, maybe you had a long water carry or something, um, you could maybe, you know, put some of the weight on your hips for a little while just to take it off your traps. You know, if you do feel like you, you need it or you want it, um, it's only a $10 add-on. And like I said, it's not sewn in the pack. You just tie it on and off. So, I mean, for 10 bucks, you know, maybe try it like I did and, you know, see if you like it. And if not, you know, hey, it's 10 bucks, right? Uh, here's the hip belt strap, guys, just in case you want to see what it looks like. I mean, that's literally it. And there's the uh, buckle for the hip belt right there. You see where my pinky is right there? There's a little loop and that is where you would thread through the hip belt and you would just tie it off. And that's how it, you know, how it stays on there. Uh, just so you know, that hip belt, only adds 1.2 ounces. So let's go ahead and move on to another optional feature. This is the Z-Packs water bottle sleeve. Um, for those of you who have been following the channel for a little while, uh, this is the one off of my other pack, my Arc Air 50. Um, it is compatible with, I think, pretty much every Z-Packs pack. Um, this thing weighs one half of an ounce. I like these things. I, I can't like physically reach behind me to grab water bottles out of you know the side pouches of any pack. So I like having it up front um, you know, to where I don't have to take my pack off to get my water. And hydration bladders are, Let's just not talk about hydration bladders. <laughs> As always, guys, um, you know, I want to thank you so much for tuning in, you know, watching the video, stopping by the channel uh, without you guys watching and, you know, giving me some feedback and stuff. The channel doesn't exist. So thank you very much. Uh, if you guys like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I have plenty of other gear reviews up on the channel, um, as well as tips, tricks, hacks, and of course, a whole bunch of backpacking trips. So if you guys like what you saw here today, you're interested in backpacking, ultralight backpacking, stuff like that, go ahead and give me a sub. Promise you, you won't regret it. Um, also too, we have a Facebook group, Sarah and I. It is called Backpacking Ohio and Beyond. Basically, it's just a forum to you know ask us some more questions, a little bit more in depth. People post their own hiking pictures and videos on there. Um, you know, We share a bunch of resources, stuff like that. But also too, we are planning an annual trip to Dolly Sods, West Virginia. Um, it's going to be Thursday through Sunday, and that is gonna be in May. Um, if you wanna get the exact dates and stuff, go ahead, join the Facebook group. Group. everybody's invited so I'm hoping a bunch of you guys show up I get a chance to you know do some hiking and camping with you and uh, you know get to meet some of you in person so if that sounds interesting to you go ahead and go down in the description box click that link anyhow guys thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time